Hey there, I'm DJ Cutman. I'm a DJ and chiptune producer. Every Wednesday night, I play a show right here on Twitch called This Week in Chiptune. I save it as a podcast. I also run a record label for video game remixes. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my thoughts on DJing and how to get started. I have boiled down the essence of DJing the way I see it to three points. The journey, the elements, and the audience. I'm going to talk briefly about all three of these boilerplate parts of DJing, at least for me. So the first thing is the journey. And you may have heard this expression thrown around by other DJs and concert goers. That the goal of a DJ is to make a continuous mix of music that creates something that is greater than the sum of its parts. So while a DJ may be playing a set like I do each week for an hour long, taking different songs from different artists, mixing them together to create a seamless mix, by the end of it all, you should be left with something that is more than just if you had listened to those 20 songs in a row. The purpose of the DJ is to sort of create something bigger. Each song is like a color in a DJ's palette. Now all DJs, no matter how they work, whether they're mixing on vinyl or using a digital setup over here like mine, they all have these core musical elements that they can use in their sets. For me, these elements are threefold. We have the tempo or speed of a song. We have the key or the mood of a song and the energy. So let's talk about tempo. Tempo is the musical term to mean beats per minute or the speed at which a song is played. DJs have a lot of control over this. They can change the speed and with that can make a one song useful in a lot of different situations. We also have the key, which is another musical term meaning the notes that are used in the song. But even more than the key is the mood and the way the song makes us feel. Something that makes us feel warm and cozy might not be the best tune for a Saturday night getting out, getting out and partying mix or what have you. Meanwhile, if we're chilling on a lazy Sunday afternoon, some cool laid back beats like the ones that I'm playing right now might be the perfect thing. And lastly, the energy. While a lot of dance music that I like is pretty high energy, danceable, fun in your face stuff, it doesn't work in all situations and it doesn't work continuously. While you may hear some DJs out there playing banger after banger after banger for hours, for me that gets exhausting. Having a little bit of ebb and flow, a little bit of dynamics in the mix can make something more enjoyable and really make something special. Talking about going back to the journey, if you're journeying into bangers for an hour, that's not much of a journey. You just went to Banger Town and you stayed there. But if you start out somewhere chill, you go through a progression, you get to Banger Town and you have a great time, and then you come out and settle down, that can be something really special. Lastly, the audience. And this ingredient is, I think, the most important. Because the audience that you're playing to as a DJ, or that I'm talking to right now, really should dictate what kind of music is being played. So who's listening? We gotta ask ourselves, you know, who is gonna be listening to this mix? Are we out at a bar? Is it a club, an outdoor festival, or a convention? All these different audiences are going to be able to accept or go different places. So while a vocal track rap track might be good for an upbeat getting things started maybe in the middle of a convention rave it wouldn't fit this comes with trial and error learning stuff that works and learning stuff that you're comfortable listening to and DJing <laughs> I'm not totally comfortable with a bunch of lights in my face but I'm, I'm working on it there's one very special audience member that every DJ should pay super close attention to, and that's ourselves. If, you get, if you're a DJ and you're looking to get gigs and make money and make a living out playing music for people, you better hope that you're playing music that you like, because I have unfortunately met too many DJs who do this professionally, who simply don't like the music they play, and thus kinda suck. There's no nice way to put it. You're playing music you don't like, 
It's going to put you in a bad mood. If you're in a bad mood, you're not going to mix quite as smoothly or creatively, and that will affect your performance. So by all means, if you want to get into DJing or making mixes, play the music that you generally like, that you genuinely like. And then from there, go out and find your audience. For me, I started playing chiptune and video game music because that was the music that I loved more than anything else. Um, I, I love chiptune. Clearly, I love video game music, and part of me was like kind of bummed that I could never go out and hear these kind of tunes. I thought, you know, this this is some of the best music for me in my some of my favorite music in my whole life uh, came from video games, and it's such a shame that uh, these awesome tunes can't be experienced out in the real world. You know, I want to go out to a bar, hang out with my friends. Sure, I could put on a video game soundtrack if I'm hanging out in my apartment, but if, what if you want to go out to a bar or an arcade? I'd love to be hearing these tunes that mean so much to me. Like somebody may have a particular bond with pop music. I got that particular bond with video game music. So my very first show in February of 2010 was at this little video game bar called Pixel Lounge in Ithaca, New York. My friend had an 8-bit art show that he was putting on, and he knew that I collected chiptune and video game music. So he asked me to put together an hour-long set of chiptune and 8-bit sounding stuff that would complement his artwork. There was another DJ who was taking care of the rest of the night. He just wanted an hour from me because he knew that no other DJs were going to play this kind of music. So it took about two weeks. I learned the bare bones of Ableton, collected my favorite video game tracks from around the internet, and put together something that I thought um, was cool. It was a fun set. It was not without its technical difficulties that all DJs face. Somebody spilled a drink on the mixer. One of my controllers, USB port popped out and then wouldn't initialize and go back in. Uh, there were some scary transitions. I had um, a piece of paper set list that I wrote down which tracks I wanted to play in what order and little notes about them because I didn't know how to really build a set yet. So I just had a scrap of paper and wrote them all down. But when it all came down to it, I played the set. It was pretty fun. Um, and, um, and that was that. I took the recording of the set, or rather I had it in Ableton. So I took the program part of the set and exported it and uploaded it to the, at that time, Baby Baby Chan DJ Cutman SoundCloud. So, I'm gonna turn down this beat and focus. Oh. Tractor, what's going on? Wow, there's something happening. That was a good part for that to break, though, honestly, because um, at least I know where I am in the notes. Hey, remember when I was talking about how um, playing a stream is not the same as playing a bar, which is not playing a club, which is not the same as playing a festival? Playing a stream is totally the most technically crazy <laughs> DJ set I've ever done because there's so much to keep track of. Are we working again? Looks like it. How we doing in the chat? Everyone's okay? <laughs> All right, well, time to go to Serato, someone says. All right, <laughs> cool. So what were we talking about? I played my first set. Uh, it was a great time, and I uploaded it to the very, at that time, orphan baby teeny tiny Chan DJ Cutman SoundCloud. In fact, I think this was the first track that went up on my SoundCloud, was this little 50-minute mix of chiptune and video game music that I put together for my friend's art show. And that was kind of it. I posted up the mix. That was it. Forever. I'm done. Goodbye. No, of course not. But that was it for then. I had worked up to this big show. I spent two solid weeks learning the thing, building the set, experimenting, learning how I was going to play, figuring out a workflow, how to set up the gear, yada, yada, yada. And uh, then it was done. I posted it and I went about my business. I went back to my job at the recording studio, uh, working on rap albums and also helping out with some film stuff. And then it was a couple months down the road, I was walking down the street of the Commons in Ithaca, New York, and I bumped into a friend. Well, I wouldn't say he was a friend, he was more of an acquaintance. Somebody I had seen at parties and bars a couple times, but we never really hung out too much. Um, and I bumped into him on the street and he goes, Hey, 
you did that cub man thing that video game mix right and i was like yeah i did that thing like months ago what it about it and he goes i love that thing man i listen to it every day and i was like well i mean thank you so much for listening that's that's great uh all right see ya and it got me thinking like this is a guy who sort of knew me but you know we were just basically acquaintances um who was getting this joy out of this thing i made this little mix of video game music that i hadn't even thought about after that night you know i posted it up i listened to it for a few times but mostly it was like kind of like this reminder of oh my god all this crazy stuff happened the drinks got spilled the controllers broke yada 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 but here was somebody else who really took significance from it and it had a real impact on me it made me realize that as a dj our responsibility is to bring our favorite music to people. And once that's done successfully, it can last a long time. It can last for life. So I had shared some of my favorite music in the terms of a 50 minute little set that I posted up on SoundCloud and I played in a little college town bar that had become the soundtrack to this dude's life, at least for a little while. And man, if I didn't realize I, I, I must have stood there in the comments after he left like, oh my gosh, other people like this stuff? Like I did this as a, as a, I did this as a thing, a favor for my friend who like drew a bunch of cool artwork for me and, and I, I figured I had to pay him forward somehow. Um, but here's some random other person who found this thing on the internet and really got a lot of meaning out of it. And that had an impact on me. And, and um, so I started making mixes. Um, I wasn't playing a whole lot of shows. <laughs> Jeez, Tractor, keep it together, man. Um, I wasn't playing a whole lot of shows. In fact, I didn't know how to get a show. The only reason I got that first gig is because my friend worked there as a bouncer, and he was like, come play. It's my show. It's my art show. You can play. And I said, okay. I was playing on the street. I would put my speakers and my laptop in my cat carrier and like walk out onto the street of the commons and plonk them down and plug them into one of those little public outlets they have at the gazebos and like sit my laptop on my knees and like just play out video game music using Ableton. Little beats I made or just original soundtrack stuff. I didn't know how to get a gig. Um, I didn't know I wanted a gig to be totally honest. I just knew I loved sharing video game music certainly didn't know of any bars or clubs that were inter interested in a Legend of Zelda night. But little did I know, working on this fun stuff for the one important audience member myself, turned out that I shared a taste with a lot of other people. So I started making mixes with Ableton Live, which we'll talk about in a little bit, how you actually set it all up. And um, I made a couple and they were really fun. Uh, and then I made one that really made waves. It was called The Legend of Dubstep. And it was a short, talking 30 minute mix of my favorite video game songs that big name producers had made. Uh, every, it seemed that everybody had done like one, Rusko, Skrillex, Zed, they had all done one video game inspired tune. And I made a mix of all of those. And um, Legend of Dubstep, I mean, it didn't get a bajillion plays. It didn't change my life right there. But what I noticed happening is that's when I went up on the radar for people who liked video game music and liked dance music. Uh, this Legend of the Dubstep mix started this slow trickle of new followers and new fans. And uh, it was really, really cool to see this happen, but I knew that it wasn't gonna last unless I used this momentum. So I started producing more mixes. I started to do theme mixes like Dubtropolis and um, other sort of, I tried to just do as much stuff as I could to um, continue DJing, continue, continue doing the thing that I really loved, which was making mixes. And that's when I started getting approached to play shows. I started getting approached by conventions and one con, MAGFest, gave me the opportunity to play on one of their stages for the first time. And that was, just a really cool experience. It was an unpaid gig. I just did it for the experience to have fun and to fulfill my goal of sharing my favorite music with people. And now I do this professionally, but that spirit lives on from the early days. My job as a DJ is to share my favorite music with the people I think will like it. And sometimes people I don't think will like it end up liking it. That's pretty cool, right? And it's really helped sort of guide my compass through this whole process. I've been DJing as Cutman for five years now, 
and it has not always been good. In fact, a lot of it has been really tough. But knowing my mission is to share my favorite music, and at the bottom line, that's what being a DJ means for me. It's helped me get through the hard times, and it's helped me stay focused when the good party times happen. So let's talk about what a DJ can do to be a better DJ. And the number one thing for me is know your music. When you want to be a DJ, whether you want to get into it or you're doing it now, you're going to have to be consuming music at an unusual rate for any human being. For me, I listen to music pretty much from when I wake up until I go to bed at night. And before I was DJing, I'd have a few favorite albums that I would play a lot or things I would loop or something like that, soundtracks and stuff. But when I started DJing, every minute I had free ears became a moment that I could be working on being a better DJ. By listening to tracks that I wanted to DJ and getting to learn them better, little nuances in the track, knowing when I could mix in and mix out, getting ideas about mashups and other things I could do with the track, and then hunting for new music. I find that listening to songs over and over again that I want to play gets me prepared for any set. So like the day before This Week in Chiptune, Tuesday is today, and tomorrow, I have collected all of the music that I'm going to be, want to be playing on tomorrow's show. And all day, from when I wake up until 10 o'clock tomorrow on Wednesday, I'm going to be listening to that music. Just no matter what I'm doing, I'm running an errand to the post office, I'm shipping out some merch, I'm doing my emails or whatever, I'm going to be looping all these tracks. So when 10 o'clock rolls around, I've heard all those tracks four or five times, and even if I wasn't totally consciously like marking down how long each sequence is and all that stuff, in my head, I will be familiar enough with the songs to be able to do a good job DJing them. I found in my second year of DJing that when I would listen to songs that I had played before, I would start to be able to imagine new transitions and mashups. And I think that's a really good sign. If you're new to DJing and want to get started out, and maybe you're listening to a song on the radio, and then another song pops into your head while you're listening to the first one, that's a really good sign. That means that those two tracks may work in a DJ set, and that you're already starting to think like a DJ. Like I said, each track is a color in the palette, so you can't just pull out one tune and be like, my whole set's gonna be based around this tune, because that's being like, my whole painting's gonna be brown. I'm gonna paint brown today. Like, you could do that. You could paint brown, man, but if you wanna be a good DJ, and take your audience on a journey, you're gonna have to have a lot of tunes, a lot of colors at your disposal. So talking about getting prepared for This Week in Chiptune, before every show I make what I call a preparation list, which is a selection of songs I'd like to play for that show. For this week, usually they're two to three times longer than the set I'm supposed to play. So for This Week in Chiptune, which is an hour long show every week, I'm usually looking to get between two, three, or maybe even four hours of music to get ready for the show. This has a lot of benefits, preparing more music than you could play in your time slot. For one, it gives you more creative freedom during the set. You don't have to be tied down to those certain songs. Maybe you really liked one song in your headphones, but then you found out, hey, you can't mix this thing with anything. Um, and also, for those playing out at clubs and bars, and even playing here on Twitch, you're prepared to extend your set if need be. I've seen DJs at big festivals have to play an extra 10 or 15 minutes because of one thing or another who totally weren't prepared and went from having a super killer set to having a really rough 10 minutes in front of everybody because they weren't prepared with a little bit of extra music. So it's important to know your music and to be prepared. And DJing is just the best because you could prepare simply by listening to music. Of course, you will need some degree of practicing with your equipment, whatever it will be. But the core is knowing your music. Now, there's a couple of different programs that you can use to DJ. Uh, right now, we're looking at Tractor, which is similar. is like a did. It's like a DJ. It's like a digital version of a classic DJ setup. Two decks that can play two songs, either in the same tempo or in different ones. We also have Ableton Live, which is a program that allows you to both perform live 
and program and sequence and, and make beats. So there's two little schools of thought when you're going into making mixes and DJing. There is programming with Ableton and performing with Traktor. Now, I say that these programs are special to their own things, Ableton to programming, Traktor to performing, but you really can use them the other way if you want. For me, I found that programming in Ableton is just the dream and DJing in Traktor is super fun. Programming in Traktor is really tough and playing with Ableton, while I still do each This Week in Chiptune episode as an Ableton set, I have a lot more fun performing with Traktor. There are benefits to both ways. For programming with Ableton, it allows you a huge, almost impossibly limitless degree of control. You can control everything to the nanosecond when the filter turns on, to the way the crossfader moves. You can do everything and you can make a mix, in theory, flawless. My Legend of Dubstep mix was based off a live show, but then programmed so I had every transition down the way I wanted it. As a younger DJ, I couldn't always nail these transitions, but using Ableton, I was able to set things up and knock them down with automation. Now performing, on the other hand, is different and just super duper fun. And when I'm playing at cons and shows, I'm performing with Traktor. The thing about performing is you do need some level of hardware. I have three pieces of gear here, a chaos pad that I use for effects, my MIDI fighter, which allows me to jump to different points in my track, and the core of the setup, this Traktor Z1, which is both a sound card and an audio interface, and a controller. Now there's a lot of hype around DJ controllers, and if you're thinking, hey, I wanna get started on DJing, I'm gonna go out and buy a thing. I would say don't. Why? Because you can do all this stuff without any controllers. And until you've identified what kind of music you wanna play, how you wanna play it, and who you're gonna play it to, there's a real chance that if you run out and buy a piece of gear, it may not be what you want. For example, I didn't have this or this, my tractor controller or my MIDI fighter when I was first playing shows. I was playing with just a chaos pad and a small audio interface running out of Ableton. An audio interface is a USB device that takes the load of processing your sound off of your computer's main John and puts it into a dedicated piece of hardware. The result is a cleaner and louder sound. Now, I don't want to see any of you guys listening to this panel plugging in your headphone jack into your laptop and playing a show out anywhere. Um, don't let the sound guy tell you it's okay, because it's not okay. These little headphone jacks do not sound anywhere near um, the quality or clarity of a dedicated piece of gear. Uh, there are cheap ones. I got, I got this little red guy. Can I show it to you? The cable's very short. <laughs> cable's so short. I... <laughs> I'm gonna get it. It's twist tied. So just just a moment. Oh Yeah This is a really big twist tie for such a little red box Here we go It's a little Behringer U audio device. It's about 30 bucks on Amazon I will put a link to it in the description of the video and um, Actually, if you're on my twitch channel, there's a link to one down in my gearbox already um, very very simple very very cheap and you'll be able to hook it up to USB and play out of it. Now you won't have the level of control that you would to use a big old mixer or something like that, but it's a start. And it will give you a higher quality sound that will be able to be reproduced on a bigger set of speakers and sound better. I have so many little pieces of audio. I wanted to show them all to you, but they're just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, Let's actually talk about what it takes to DJ, huh? I talked for a long time about the spirits and my thought about it, and I hope you guys liked it. I don't have a reliable way to look at the chat, but what have you. Let's talk about DJing, huh? So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you a little bit how I DJ live with Traktor here. I'm gonna experiment, mix a few songs and sort of talk you through what I'm doing. And then we're gonna go over into Ableton. I'm gonna program the same thing. So hopefully we can find a cool mashup here in Traktor, and then I can show you how I would program it in Ableton. We'll start with this Shovel Knight track I did with Kevin Vileko. Beautiful. 
you may have heard some big helmet clad DJs saying that all you need to do to be a DJ is press play. And of course that's not the case, but pressing play is a critical part of this stuff. There's so many features, so many things you could do, but pressing play at the right moment is the core of this craft. And it's not just, you can't just do whenever you want. Like, check this out. Like, oh, we're at a party. It's pretty good. And Oh, that was weird, right? If there was a bunch of people dancing, they would have stopped. I was kind of dancing around and then I stopped. So let's, let's talk about this Shovel Knight track. It's 172 beats per minute. That's fast. I know that that will mix well with drum and bass, but I'll have to make some adjustments if I want to go to another type of music. It's very high energy. So I'm going to know that I'm going to have to either keep it with another high energy track or make a deliberate motion to help guide people to something calmer. As you can see, I have Shovel Knight playing on this one deck here and this other deck is stopped. I can load another track here and listen in my headphones and check if it's going to be a good track. So check it out. I'll go and pick something else up now. If you're using a program like Tractor, you're able to sort the music by key. This will give us a nice idea of what songs will mix well with this one. Some good tunes in here. Keep it video gamey, this other track is by Benjamin Briggs. It's a remix of Super Smash Brothers. But I can see this track is much, much slower. It's 160 beats per minute. So to do that, I'm gonna slow down Shovel Knight right now in this little breakdown. Now Shovel Knight is playing about the speed that this other track is gonna play. And because I changed the tempo when there wasn't a really intense part, it didn't feel too weird. I'm gonna hit this sync button in Tractor that will automatically set the tempo of the Smash Brothers track to the exact tempo of the Shovel Knight track. A lot of DJs will tell you, never touch the sync button or always leave the sync button on. But the truth is gonna line up with who you're playing for and what kind of music. For this week in Chiptune, a lot of tracks I played unsynced because there are tempo changes or other things and I don't want my software to mess with those at all. But then to other times, I'll want to be able to control the mood and vibe, push up a song in tempo if I want it to be more energetic, or bring it down if I need to dial it back, or transition into another song. I'll start playing Ben's song now. One great thing about Tractor is the ease to pull loops. So I've set a place to loop. Now both tracks are playing, but I have a loop going on Shovel Knight, so it'll never reach the big drum part again. Now I can fade it out. And now Shovel Knight's gone, and we're just listening to Ben's Smash track. Try another one. Now I'm looking for something that is in similar key and tempo. Ah, my Space Harrier remix. It's a little bit faster, but that's okay. I'll hit the sync button and it'll automatically make it the same tempo as the other track I'm playing. Now you can see this layout. I'm looking at the waveform. I can move it around if I want. That's annoying. But I can see this little chilled out blue part coming. This is telling me that this is some part that probably doesn't have a whole lot of drums that's more low key. And it'd be a great time to transition into another song. 
The DJ should always be thinking one song ahead of the one that's playing. So when you watch me play an episode of This Week in Chip Tune, a lot of times the song in my headphones hasn't started coming out of the speakers yet. Let's listen to this mashup now. Cool. They're in the same key, so it sounds all right. I turned off the bass on Ben's track. Of these three EQ bands that DJs have available to them, typically, the bass is the most important because it'll be the easiest that you can overload your speakers with. Too much bass in the mix can come out muddy and gross. You can lose your kick drums and your bass line, which is the foundation and what makes a whole lot of people dance. So of all the things on this mixing board, and this is a small one, the knobs I almost tweak more than anything else with these low end ones, allowing me to turn off the bass like this. And add it back. Even boost it if I'm playing a chip tune or a video game track that doesn't quite have enough bass. Cutting out your bass is also a great way to build a transition into a new song. Check this out. I'll cut this out and let a new track. Oops. Fade it in. Really simple stuff here. Young DJs may be tempted to do a whole lot of mixing and a whole lot of mashups, but the foundation of a good set is simply moving from one song to another. So when in doubt, fade it out. You don't have to do anything fancy if you're just gonna keep the music going. That rhymed, that was pretty rad. That was not written in my notes. When in doubt, fade it out. I got too excited and Evernote just showed me a big blank page. More like Nevernote, am I right? There we go. I'll show you some other cool tricks because this will be a fun track to do it on. I'll show you effects I can do with this MIDI fighter and also a little bit of what an effects processor like the Chaos Pad can do. Check it out.
fun stuff, huh? There was a lot of effects. I was toggling through a bunch of different things. Don't think that the entire time I'm playing a DJ set, I'm doing that, though. There are certain songs where it really works. I find dubstep is a ton of fun to chop up and mash, but it doesn't work for everything. So if you're gonna include effects like this into your DJ setup, make sure that you're using them conservatively and at the right time. Because done wrong. Remember, you're always playing to your audience, so feel free to chop up, chop and screw, screw up anything when you're in your own headphones. But if you're playing to other people, you're going to have to take them into account. So that's a little bit about the fun way and how much fun Tractor is to DJ with in a live environment. I hope you guys liked it. I'll show you a little bit about what we can do with Ableton. It's different, um, but it's also very cool. So let's get it booted up. Ableton's really cool. I can just drag a tune from iTunes or anywhere on my hard drive right into it. I got two tracks in Ableton, and you'll see I have two tracks already set up because I have this default set built in Ableton for DJing. Basically, I have what would be an A deck and a B deck. Two decks on my mixing board, but I've built them here in Ableton. One of the cool things about Ableton is you don't need any hardware at all to get going on this stuff. So I can build a whole set without any gear at all. If I double click on this tune, you'll be able to see what Ableton has interpreted it as. A big brick. It's my awesome mastering. We can zoom way in and take a look at the track. Ableton has done its best to decide the tempo of the song. This is a little weird. Let me clean it up. There we go. Let's take a look at the other track. Looks like it's figured it out too. We can tell that the warping is working because the big moments are on these big counters. See where it says like a seven, a big line, big, big boom. Now there's a way to test this out to make sure there's been no mistakes with Ableton's built-in metronome. First, I'm gonna set the tempo of the whole Ableton project to the tempo of the songs, which are 86, which is also like 172 but Ableton's reading them as 86, it's the same thing. All right, arrow chord, we're bringing you down, buddy. I'm gonna put this metronome on Ableton and we're gonna listen. If the metronome sounds like it's clicking on the beat, then we're ready to mix. If it's screwed up, well, then we're gonna have to do some damage control. Sounds good. Let me jump ahead to later on the track and see if it's still on. Yep. Great, nice and easy, everything was ready to go. <laughs> that metronome. Let's try the Gravity Falls track. Oh, I'm so quiet now. Still sounds like it's on beat. Now I noticed that the Shovel Knight track sounded a little bit louder than the Gravity Falls track. DJ software like Tractor can sometimes update that for you automatically, but in Ableton, we have all the control. So what I'm gonna do is just bring down the volume of Shovel Knight just a little bit. And I can do that from within the track in Ableton. A really cool way to let you adjust different tracks before having to get all into your automation and all your business. So this is the way that Ableton loads up by default. And some people think it's a little weird and I don't get it and it's creepy. And for and to be honest, that was me for a long time. But then I found out that you hit tab and now you're in this row view that looks more like other DAWs. GarageBand is what I started in. Logic and FL Studio look a little bit more like this. Let me close my plugins here. And I can drag a track from this one view into the other. Can I do it with one hand while I'm holding a mic? Oh my gosh. What five years on the DJ circuit will do for you. Now I hit this little play button and I'll go back and listen to this arrangement, which is right now just Shovel Knight. There it is. So my idea is to have Shovel Knight play until a quiet part and then cut out the bass of it and bring in the Gravity Falls track. I know they're at the same key, so let's look for that part. Let me make these windows a little bit bigger. Now I got it.
This sounds like a good place to bring in a new track. Now the thing about this Shovel Knight track is there's a ton of bass. So if I bring another track in with a lot of bass, like this Gravity Falls mix, it's gonna sound all messy. So we gotta take care of that. So check out this level of detail. I'm gonna go into my audio effects. I'm gonna pull out this little guy. An EQ8. Please ignore all my other junk that's on this. Boop. And I'm gonna roll off the low end. You can see it bumping right here as I pull this over. All the bass is gone now. I'll turn it off, you'll hear it come back. Now that there's no bass, that's similar to if I turn this low knob on my mixer. But we're doing it in Ableton. And because we're doing this with an effect in Ableton, we'll have total control over how it moves. So check it out. You find the point. I'll bring this back. That's where I want the bass to cut out, right at the nine beat. So I can zoom in, zoom, zoom, zooming 10. I'm gonna say, get out of here. Get out of my face menu. I'm gonna submit, write some automation. This is getting a little techy. If you like it, great. If you're scared, we'll have a cool mashup in like two or three minutes. You can skip ahead until then. Uh, we're going to want to change the frequency of this curve. Bump, bump. I'll just click on it, it'll pop up. I want that last kick to hit, and then I want it to just be super no bass. And you can see as I turn this up, I can see it changing. Let's fix this little guy, there we go. Based on where my playhead in Ableton is, so if I click over here, I see how it is before, I click over here, I see how it is after. Let's listen to it. Cool, right? So we could get like really psychotic, crazy, super, super deep and be like, oh, well, I don't know about this mix because clearly the automation is swooping in at the end of the tail of this kick and you can do some shit like this and then you're like, oh boy, and all of a sudden it's done and you're still working on this mix, but <laughs> there we go. There we go, sounds perf. Or would it sound more perf if I did it like that? No, that does not sound perf to me. We're gonna use that little quiet spot again. Uh, in Ableton, you can hold down option to make curvies like this. That's a technical term, curvy. It's an engineering term to mean things that are curvaceous. <laughs> Let's do it. The lights are frying my noodles. They're cooking my, they're cooking my caboodle. All right. All right, enough of this jokes. Let's get this Gravity Falls track in. Bump, bump, bump. I've moved the playhead. To right there, so all I can do, again, one-handed, microphone holding, tab hitting, boop it over here, boop. And because, check it out, we wanted the EQ to cut out here, there's a moment where we're gonna have bass on both tracks. And on a DJ set, if you have those little moments in a, live, in a club or at a festival or at a con, they usually go unnoticed. But on a mix, when people are, when your audience is going to be listening in headphones, phones, listening in their car or on the way to work, or maybe just listening super focused and not surrounded by an environment of a music show, these little elements can come through. Another reason why I said right at the beginning of this to identify who your audience is going to be starting out, because if your audience is cons and you're not putting mixes on SoundCloud, you should always be putting mixes on SoundCloud anyway. But if you're just focusing on making a great live show, these little elements you can forget about for now and focus on mixing, track selection, and, and getting down with your gear. But if you're focusing on a mix for an online audience or for a recorded audience, going, putting in the extra mile and making all these elements perfect or as perfect as you can get them really does make a difference. And I feel like the reason my Legend of Dubstep mix went off in the way that it did is I spent weeks on that thing. And it was just about a half an hour, and I spent weeks and weeks tweaking every transition. I must have listened to that mixed over a hundred times during production. And um, I think that that really makes a difference, I do. So I copy and pasted the EQ from the other track. I can see where this one goes, and I'm just gonna basically flip it around. Sweet, this is gonna be sweet. Can you hear it? It's like gonna work. <laughs> yes. I've never done this mix live either. Um, Shovel Knight into Gravity Falls so is gonna totally work. All right, let's zoom out. We'll get the EQ out of the way so we can see these two tracks go. 
And let's hear it. Let's hear our little programmed mix. It's not working. It's not. That maybe this is why I've never done it live. Let's listen again to this track and turn on the metronome to see if the beats are the same. Something sounds weird, like it's not totally on the mark. Ooh, it looks like it's not. There we go. Trust your ears. That's a real old school engineering term. And if something sounds like it's not right, it's because something's not right. This little shit over here. Ableton, for some reason, got the start point a 30-second note off, which just trashed this transition. A tiny little bit off in a live DJ set may go unnoticed, like I mentioned. But in a program set, when everything's super precise, you're going to hear that. Let's see if it works now. If it doesn't, I'm, like, just lost. There we go. This is sweet. This is like the joy of, of it right here. Uh, let's do something cool. Uh, since we have these EQs set up, uh, the dun, 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 that sweet riff that Vert wrote, uh, I want the bass to come back in the Shovel Knight track just for that part, which is convenient because the bass is like almost completely gone in the Gravity Falls track at that part. And I can see that in the waveform. See how this beginning waveform is super big fatty? But over here, it's like big fatty right here. Big fatty, that's that bass. But over here, it's pretty light. We have the kicks, but that may not be a big deal. So let's find the vert stuff. There it is. I'm gonna select it here with Ableton. Now I really gotta put the mic down. I'm gonna drag it. Drag that down. There we are. And I see the kick come back. So I'm gonna give myself a little point. Close it, and bend this up. Just a little bit. This happens four times, and Ableton is a great program because it'll let you copy a little sliver of automation. If I can remember the keyboard shortcut. Copy envelope. And it should happen four times. Yep, there it is again. Let's see if this one's right. The two bass, there is a little bit of bass in the Gravity Falls track that's screwing stuff up, so I'm gonna have to bring it up. And I just, I just feels like when there's a, just a little bit too much energy down in that low end, everything gets gross. So this, this is why as a DJ, you wanna make sure under very, under very rare circumstances that you play more than one, that you don't play more than one bass line at a time. Super clean, we did it. I made that little loop in tractor. Yo, this works out so good. Oh my gosh, these tracks I made like three years apart and they're like basically the same track. Well, they will be once I do this. I can take a little, like I looped in tractor, I can do the same thing over here with Ableton by duplicating a bit. Maybe we go back to Shovel Knight here. Yo, this mashup, how rewarding. This is why I love DJing. I like, we hit all of our goals on groupies. I was super stoked and I was like, yeah, I'll do a presentation like my, like my con panel. But to be totally honest, I've never had this kind of luck with a mashup or a production at a con panel as I did with this jam right here. Let's listen to this now. We'll hear it with the loop. 
that I made, and then we'll hear them play together, switching the bass line back to Shovel Knight after the vampy part. The term drop has been replaced with the term chorus these days. People say, oh, sick, drop. And that usually means like sick EDM chorus part. But a drop in hip hop used to mean the part where the sound drops out. And this is a great opportunity for that, which is a very useful technique in DJing. When people stop dancing, sometimes dropping the music out or dropping out the bass is a great way to get people to be like, hey, where'd the music go? And then you bring it back and everyone's like, yeah. Simple as that. I don't know if we're going to survive that part. That's the crazy part of the Shovel Knight. When it starts playing at a live set, I'm like, whoop, I guess I'm playing the rest of this song. There's no way out. Oh, the, it, the key modulates too. So even though the song is telling me that it's in, don't mind the desktop. Oh, is this official drum kit? It's great. Even though the song is telling me that it's in D minor, I can hear at this part, it modulates to a different key and is no longer friendly with other tracks in D minor. By the way, there's a circle of fifths. It has been my desktop since I started DJing. It helps me keep track of what song key is. I'm burning out, clearly. And other good music stuff is important. Um, that part is odd. Chat, nailed it. Let's listen to this mashup. No, let's figure out an outro for it because when we're producing, we're programming, we gotta keep in mind the whole thing. So even though you have this great idea for a mashup, if, for example, it only works in certain parts, that might be a really cool trick for you to do live. But if you can get the whole thing to behave like a song, then that's something great that you can upload for your SoundCloud and give it out. Of course, if you have the rights to it and all that stuff. Then we're never going to get to that part. I'm 
just going to fade it out. Let's check out the, let's check it out. Let's listen. So I don't know if this programming part was more interesting or super way more boring than the live DJ part, but it's very, very different. The process is super different. We're going to listen to this mix. I have some closing thoughts and then we're done. Thanks for watching this. My first like panel on the internet. Uh, yeah. What did you think? Let me know. There we have it. I'm just throwing a limiter on the mix so I can upload it to SoundCloud. It's all nice and loud for you guys. This is FabFilter. They make incredible plugins. Their EQ is my absolute favorite. I wasn't going to get too into plugins, but this, this has a preset called Yeah, It's Even Louder. I also like Made for Beats. Oh, but there's a drum and bass preset. Oh, all the presets in here are great. The L stands for loud. That's, that's a good point. Chijolo says redliners are headliners. I don't know if I feel that good about that statement. Don't redline your mixer, folks. Just get a good sound card, that's all you need.
All right, guys, I'll be sure to upload that to SoundCloud so you guys can listen to it. Thank you so much for tuning into my DJing panel. We hit our $5,000 goal on Groupies. It's just so, so, so amazing. So thank you very much, everybody who supported the Twit Groupies bundle. There is still some time, uh, I think less than 24 hours, though. So if you haven't picked up the Twit 100 bundle, there's a link right below in my Twitch to get it. If you're watching this on YouTube and the bundle's gone, don't sleep on the Groupies bundles. I'm trying to share good stuff with you guys. I'm a DJ. My mission is to share great music, and I am sticking to that for as long as I got two hands to mix. That's something. I'll stick with it forever. I love this stuff. So, um, man, I'm doing this with like a like notes and everything. It's a little overwhelming. Anyway, my closing statement is if you love this stuff, if you love your music, if you love working with your music, and you love sharing music, then you can be a good DJ. So make sure that you're listening to your tunes, you're thinking about them, you're thinking about what is going to work. We're cooking in the other room too. And always, this is the big thing, always be a student of your art. So if you want to work with music in any way, just make sure you're doing everything you can to learn what you can. Learn about the songs you want to play. Learn about the way to make songs, if that's what you're interested in. Learn about how other DJs are making their mixes or performing live. You can come and tune into every episode of This Week in Chiptune every Wednesday night, right here on Switch, and you can take a look at how I'm doing it. You can, and over time, you'll hear transitions, you'll hear drops and other tricks. And over time, you'll be able to identify what you want to do and, you know, if you think about it and work towards it, who you want to play to and what you want to share. Make mixes for yourself and then share them with other people. And as you get feedback and you hear other DJs doing stuff and you hear other producers making stuff, you'll be able to adjust your technique to your taste. And um, that's really all there is to it. If you like it, do it. I'm DJ Cutman. Thanks so much for tuning into my panel. Thing, stream, Twitch, tutorial, whatever. We hit all of our girls on groupies. Thank you. Enjoy all of that music. Um, yeah. I'm going to open it up to questions actually in the chat for a little bit. And then we'll wrap this all up. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll take a few questions from the chat. Real panel style. Question, do I have any Castlevania remixes? Yes, I got a bajillion of them. I have a whole album I did with Samus. We also put out Vlad, Joshua Morris put out that album. Um, if you have any doubt about remixes that I've done, just Google DJ Cutman name of game. I tag hard. I upload stuff with descriptions. So search for DJ Cutman Castlevania or Game Chops Castlevania, and that'll turn you into remixes that I've worked on for just about any game I can think of. Where do you get the snake shirt? I got that MAGFest. Bought it out of a kid's backpack, too. I don't know if he's a kid. kid. He's a good guy. Um, that's also where I got my super awesome Zelda hat. Is I saw a guy walking around with a bunch of hats at a con. I was like, let me buy one. So cons, go to cons. If you like nerdy stuff, you like nerdy music, definitely get out to cons and events. Somebody's looking into getting into producing and looking for a recommendation on different DAWs. Uh, I started with GarageBand on my Mac. It was, it's very bare bones. They've expanded it now, but it was a great way to get used to making music with a computer. If you got a Windows computer, I hear a lot of great things about FL Studio. I haven't used it, but you can make some great music. I like Ableton Live. The learning curve is kind of a cliff, but once you get it, you can just do anything with it. From performing to producing, Ableton is a real blast. How long does it take me to make a song? Um, you know, this is kind of interesting. Um, to finish a song, um, I think one of my biggest productions in my first year took me 50 hours, or like over 50 hours with two people working on it. So I've spent a ton of time on the song. 
The Shovel Knight remix that we worked on also took 50 or 60 hours, five years later. So that's crazy. So the time it takes maybe hasn't changed so much. My process definitely has, and I feel like the quality is better. But the core of making a beat, I don't know if you said a song or a beat, but making a beat can, since I started this at the very, very dawn of my beat making to right now, my beats have always come together in about 15 minutes. And I will know within 15 minutes if it's gonna work and it's worth putting more time into to make it better, or if it's not working and I should try something else. So for me, like a beat, a simple beat, I should come together rather quickly. What's a good place to get samples? I like Prime Loops. Prime Loops has some great kits. Um, they put out a free thing called the Studio Collection that just rules. I don't know if you can still get it, but uh, I like Prime Loops. I've also used some stuff from Loop Masters, uh, but a lot of software, Ableton, GarageBand, FL, comes with a lot of samples that should get you started in making stuff. Please, this is my PSA. Don't go running out to Guitar Center or Amazon and buy a bunch of stuff because you want to get into this. You can do it with no money at all. You can get a demo of FL or a demo of Ableton and try it out and see if that's how you like it. I've seen so many people getting into this, buying pieces of gear that end up not being for the type of music they want to make. Um, if the best thing to do is if you have a friend who uh, has the gear, you can try it out, or you can go to Guitar Center and try stuff, or watch videos of people using their gear and say, hey, that the way he's doing it, I'd like to do similar stuff. That's how I got my Chaos Pad, actually. I saw a guy at a con beatboxing with it, and while I don't beatbox with mine, the way he was processing his vocals made me think, hey, this would be really cool for a DJ set, and I've taken this piece of gear with me everywhere. <laughs> Somebody says, are presets a no-no? That is a no-no. No-nos are no-no in music. Wait, what? In uh, um, Everything is good. If it sounds good, it is good. If it's a preset, great. If it's a sample out of the box, great. But something to keep in mind that if it's easy, it may not be good. And if it's good, it might not be easy. Every once in a while, though, you, you, you roll the hard six and you get something awesome. But... Uh, yeah, whatever sounds good. Don't feel bad uh, sampling. Don't feel bad um, using shitty samples in a cool way. Presets are a great place to start. But as you get more into making music, your vision will get clearer and you'll be able to imagine stuff that you won't be able to get with presets. So for now, just make beats, make songs, do it in whatever way you can. Don't feel bad about how you're doing it because totally, honestly, everybody, it doesn't matter how you make the music. It matters how the music sounds. There is a vicious preset chat happening now. <laughs> is the Skrillex Diplo just the Bieber collab good? I haven't heard it. Is that's a thing, right? Though I believe it's a good. Oh, that's a Duke Ellington quote. If it sounds good, it is good. I was taught by one of the engineers who taught me how to work in a studio. Said that to me once. What non-video game music do I enjoy? I enjoy a lot of music. Pretty much anything, if it's mixed well, <laughs> I'm into it. I don't have a whole lot of barriers in style and stuff. Um, I, I love a lot of the guys on my label, Game Chops. Uh, Grimecraft, Ben Briggs, Blind and Absurdist are all awesome producers, and I am uh, I feel really fortunate to have them on my label and to be able to work with them and call them friends. So, uh, yeah, those guys rule. I'm also a big fan of... From a label side, Monster Cat. I think everything Monster Cat's doing rocks. And uh, so on a label side, man, they are so cool. You got to check out their 24-7 stream here on Twitch. It's always got like a thousand people in the room. It's awesome. What's my favorite thing to eat when I'm making music? I usually don't eat in front of the computer because it gets all gunky. But I really like having some water with me to stay hydrated. That's important. And I make this cocktail of ginger beer and mate. That's really good. Uh, it's not really good when you pour it inside of your laptop, which I learned the hard way. But it's a delicious drink. It's got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of caffeine. Keeps me going. I used to drink energy drinks, but not so much anymore. They kind of stop working. I feel like a Red Bull is like a net zero with the, the amount of sugar in it and the amount of caffeine. They're just like, I don't know. It doesn't get me going.
Water is good for your voice. Room temperature water is actually is good for your voice. This is a real panel. You get to watch me drink water. You're getting the whole con experience, except for my background is is Ableton. All right, you guys are just trolling around, so I guess Q&A is over. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I want to take one more question, though. Oh, awesome final question. What is the favorite song I've ever made? Well, up until this other one I'm about to play, it was definitely, definitely this Shovel Knight remix I did with Kevin. It's been so well received. Um, it goes off every time I play it live. It goes off every time I play it in Twitch. Um, but my roots are hip-hop. Uh, I uh, went to school, uh, listened to a lot of hip-hop. Uh, I rapped in high school. And... Um, when I started making beats and recording and working as an engineer, excuse me, it was in a rap studio. Um, I don't rap now, but I still do like beats and I really, really appreciate something that is not too crazy, not too out there, can take a sample and a mood and just, just go home with it. And this beat that I made on my most recent album, DJ Cutman Volume 3, is called Past My Bedtime. And it's a sample from Animal Crossing, and my goodness, I must have just listened to this on loop for hours, for hours and hours and hours. The beat came together, the, the bare bones beat, in about 15 minutes, and then I, I spent days tweaking the mix to get it sounding just right. But the beat was there, the energy was just right, the vibe and the and the mood was, was there, and the tempo just, everything just lined up. So this is past my bedtime. Uh, thanks so much. For tuning in, I'm DJ Cutman. I'm streaming live every Wednesday night on Twitch. My show This Week in Chiptune just celebrated our 100th episode with the Groupies Bundle. You should also check out my record label for video game remixes, Game Chops. Again, there are links under the thing. This is my favorite beat I've ever made as of today. As of since the album came out last month. Past my bedtime. I'm DJ Cutman. Thanks so much. Everybody's in the chat is talking about me rapping. You got you got to be careful what you wish for, man. I'm just at the beast out.
This tune is kind of a special one. It started as a remix of Battletoads, but then it turned into just a completely original tune. You hear that when the chip tune parts laid out? Those are just all my instrumentations, no samples. Pretty weird, huh? Pretty wild. got a really good question. I'm not very confident, but I seriously want to go pro. But let me tell you, the only thing, the best thing to build confidence is experience. And how do you get experience? Just by doing it. So find out what you like to do. Is it making mixes? Is it playing for an audience? I thought I liked playing for an audience and I got that audience on the street for my whole first year before I got ever booked. Then I fell in love with Khan. But I've always enjoyed making music and making mixes and putting them out on the internet. So for me, that was the way to do it. SoundCloud is an awesome, awesome place where you can get your music out there and get a little bit of feedback. Find out what it is you like to do and then just do it, man. And then five years from now, if you still like doing it, you'll be in a whole different place. Promise. Seeing as we just got off of successful groupies hitting all five of our goals, this is the beat I made for the original groupies reward. Good question. PC or Mac for producing? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you use. It's how you use it. Find a workflow that makes sense for the way you think creatively and just go for it. That's why a lot of people make music with these. It's my old Game Boy. Wrote a lot of tunes on this thing. No cart in there, though. Somebody in the chat says, what's a good cheap mixer? It's typically mixers are either good or cheap. But the if you want to be mixing with Tractor, I super recommend this, the Tractor Z1. It's very small. You don't have tremendous control, but it'll get you going. It's got a great sound card built in, and the price is pretty reasonable. Oh my gosh, somebody didn't know you can make music from a Game Boy. That's like half of the chiptunes in the world are all made on Game Boys. We gotta do a chiptune panel next time, I guess. All right, everybody, that's it for me. Thank you so much for everybody who supported the Groupies Bundle, and I hope you enjoyed my intro to DJing video game chiptune music edition paneled stream broadcast thing. I'm DJ Cutman. See you next time. See you on Wednesday for this week at Chippies. <laughs>